This is a disease which has a broad spectrum of severity. The person conducting your examination has to understand the spectrum of severity because you are going to be very interested in knowing whether your fetus has a relatively mild form of congenital diaphragmatic hernia or a particularly severe form of diaphragmatic hernia. In addition, congenital diaphragmatic hernia is a, an abnormality that is unfortunately commonly associated with other abnormalities. It's very important that the diagnostician performing your examination not have tunnel vision to the diagnosis of congenital diaphragmatic hernia, but must look in a very comprehensive way at your fetus to be sure that that is the only abnormality because unfortunately, but true, if your fetus has more abnormalities than the congenital diaphragmatic hernia, the prognosis is unfortunately much worse. An experienced practitioner may have seen 10 or 20 or even 50 congenital diaphragmatic hernias. We've seen probably 500 or 600 congenital diaphragmatic hernias at UCSF. So when I am confronted with a case of congenital diaphragmatic hernia, uh, the ability to say this is a congenital diaphragmatic hernia is fairly straightforward to me. I've seen so many of them. Uh, more complicated and complicated for anyone who does this is to say where in the world of fetuses with congenital diaphragmatic hernia is your fetus? Is it in the mild end or the severe end? And most of the methods of making that distinction were researched and confirmed at this institution. So we have a broad experience and what we are looking for in that circumstance is the residual lung. How does that look? Because the main impact of congenital diaphragmatic hernia isn't fixing the hernia, but the damaging effect it has on the lungs.